Welcome to the Success Story Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Clary. On this podcast, I have candid interviews with execs, celebrities, politicians, and other notable figures, all who have achieved success through both wins and losses, to learn more about their life, their ideas, and their insights. I sit down with leaders and mentors and unpack their story to help pass those lessons on to others through both experiences and tactical strategy for business professionals, entrepreneurs, and everyone in between. Without further ado, another episode of the Success Story Podcast. All right, thanks again for joining me today. I am sitting down with Levin Rambam, who is an American actress. She is a very well-known actress, uh, playing half-sisters Lily Montgomery and Ava Benton on All My Children, uh, recurring roles on Grey's Anatomy and Gone, as well as Terminator, Sarah Chronicar- uh, Chronicles, One Tree Hill, <laughs> Wizards of Waverly Place, and CSI Miami. She appeared in the sci-fi film Hunger Games as District One Tribute Glimmer and appeared as Clarice LaRue in the fantasy film Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters. Currently, she is celebrating her latest release starring as uh, Kara in The Big Ugly, which was just released July 24th and is slated to appear in one of my personal favorites, uh, The Forever Purge, which is supposed to be coming up in 2021. So Mm -hmm. thank you. I really appreciate sitting down. I want to I want to understand, you know, your story. Tell me how you got into acting. Tell me, you know, how you came to to be where you are at today, which is incredibly impressive. So thanks. Thank you. Um, I just when you're running, oh my gosh, they just painted this building pink in my neighborhood. It's really bizarre. Um, anyway, when you were running down that list, um, I was like, wow, all those shows are like no longer yeah. on on television, but you know, iconic at their time and obviously super successful smashes at their time. But it just sort of just sort of reminded me how often things change and how nothing lasts forever basically in this industry or any in any anywhere in life actually um anyway so um i started acting when i was 14 um i sort of just always had like this natural innate like very deep curiosity about um performing i guess singing and um acting and i think i wasn't as good as a singer as i might should have been or i i um it was didn't come as naturally to me as acting i guess and so honestly it was just really a combination of my willingness to say that that's what i wanted to do and actually believe that that was like a path for, that i could attain um, and then, you know, when I, when I made that known, like people just came into my life that, um, facilitated in helping me, you know, yeah. I mean, that sounds really effortless and honestly it kind of was, um, that's my story. I can't really apologize for that. Um, but it just, I had mentors come into my life and people that wanted to help me at, at that age, um, and they really did, and it changed my life as far as becoming a professional actor, and then kind of just kept going for 15 mm-hmm. years. So that's what I can say to that. I think I dug my heels in about 19. I realized, wow, this is still going, um, and I need to like elevate myself and take myself to the next level um, as far as my craft and 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 if i'm really doing this um how do i make myself the best you know and have more to offer as as far as um what what i bring to the table as an actor so yeah that's kind of how it went down and thanks be to god i still have that sense of like how can i be better what can i do to invest in myself as a as a commodity as an actor and all the things that I, I bring to, to the set. Mm-hmm. I, I noticed something that you said, and you know, you said unapologetically, it it wasn't as stressful as perhaps you know you always hear these stories of people struggling, 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 um, especially yeah. when going to the performing arts and that's. But I think you also pointed out one thing. You pointed out that you dug your heels in. You're purposeful. You're driven. You're like focused, and then you aligned with mentors that helped you get to the next level. So success is never accidental 
like everything you said, I think all those things that you sort of did at a very young age, people just end up not doing those till much later. They flip flop. Yeah. They maybe don't right, have right. the right help. They don't know what they don't know. They don't want to look for help outside of themselves. They think they know it all. All these things that sort of inhibit a career. So what, what, what guided you to find the right people to align with? What, what allowed you to dig your heels in? Was it a family support system? Um, walk me through how you made so many good moves at a young age. Well, when you're saying that, I think another thing that came up was that, you know, I was 14. So it's like I didn't have the voices of like cultural conditioning telling me I couldn't do it or telling me how hard it was or how much of a struggle it was. I hadn't entered that like plexus of like cynicism and negativity yet. I was still, you know, watching Disney movies and thinking how I could be anything I wanted and as a child. And um, so I think that definitely helped me enter that world because I, I hadn't faced, you know, that sort of cliche turning to, not, you know, all the voices, all the, tra all the trash that you hear <clears throat> as an adult, like you're supposed to believe that everything is hard. So that definitely helped me. Um, and I wonder if I would have had the same gusto at around 20, <laughs> you know, and I had experienced a little failure. I <clears throat> had experienced like, a little heartbreak or disappointment at any point. Um, but what, regardless, it did serve me at the time. So, you know, my parents were all also, they, they never said like, Oh, you can't do it. They were like, Oh, okay. Like here, here's the next step you should take and you should find an acting coach and we'll take you after school. And, you know, you'll have to work really hard because this is like expensive and this is like a commitment. And, um, I took it seriously because also they, they encouraged me. They were like, you're, you're good. You know, they, they, they instilled this confidence in me that I, I didn't see how I could fail uh, at that point. Um, I didn't even know what I was actually trying to achieve, but mm -hmm. I just was like, this seems like a natural step in, in, in uh, pursuing something. And, um, you know, I had my mom who is very, I guess interested, like she's, she's very adventurous and like interested in a lot of different things. Like she's not like, she's done public speaking before for like charities and stuff. And she had a public speaking coach because of her issues with that. You know, she, she's someone that is curious about a lot of different things. And if, if her kids or she has a problem, like she wants to find answers. So luckily I had a resourceful like mom who got me with this acting coach that helped her through her public speaking um, stuff. And this woman really believed in me and was like, I, I think you have what it takes and you have like a natural gift and I can help you kind of take it to the next level. And I think you should pursue this, honestly. And I was like, really? Okay. And that's, this is simple as that. <laughs> and it's, well, it doesn't have to be complicated. That's another, that's another really good um, thing that I, I'm, I like that you're, sort of I like the way you position that you were you were younger and that's what really let you take those steps that a lot of people they don't take because they're the fear of rejection negativity like it's man like you know the shit that you you put out into the world and people just just absolutely destroy it and it's tough it's very tough right to get to that level where you have that momentum and you have that self-confidence and I think that building that up young is is important um, and that's, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I think it's like your natural inclination as a child, right? Like you have this sense of limitlessness and I can be anything and you don't care. You know, you don't care about being rejected because you have a family and you have a solid foundation and your self-worth isn't like pinned on rejection or other people's criticism of your art. I mean, you're not thinking in those terms. You're just like, this is fun. You have yeah. this like playful sense that if you fail, whatever, you, you can become an astronaut the next day, you know, there's another door open and um, you're not pinning your whole future and self-worth on that. But I think, you know, around, you know, 17, 18, when you become an adult and enter the real world, you know, all these voices and conditioning tells you that, you know, it's too hard. This is too that you're not this enough, you know, or whatever you're you're inundated with that lasts for about that can last your entire life, that bullshit, 
you know, but for me, I feel like I, I bought into that for about 10 years and now I'm back at the place where I was when I was 14 of like, fuck it. It's fun. I don't care. <laughs> nice. This is for me. It doesn't matter if it works out. Um, this is like just personal to me and this is what I want to do. I can't fail. This is fun. Like it comes easy to me and yay. You know, I, I, cause I bought into that crap for so long and I'm like, where did that get me? Except anxious, self-conscious, upset, you know? So I feel like you start that place, you go to that, you know, place of self-doubt and just crippling anxiety. And then you, if you're lucky, you get returned to that place of like, mm -hmm. fuck it. Yeah. So I, I, I like that. The, the place of fuck it. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. it's really, you know, a good place to be. It feels great yeah. all the time now because yeah, like I said, I, I, I did that thing where I doubted myself and, you know, was my own <laughs> critic and it sort of just sh shrunk myself into like an unrecognizable version of myself. And that's not what I, I'm not into it anymore. <laughs> Well, no, that's, that's the thing. Like, and you know, you mentioned like, like I've, I've read some, I, I've read some interviews, like when, you know, I prep for these, I'm just, I'm reading some different interviews about like why you took on certain roles or why you didn't take on certain roles. And, and do you think that like your career is still like, you know, it's incredible. Like you had an incredible career, but like you still were in those moments of self doubt. So how did you, how did you, how did you push through that and still maintain? You said for 10 years, you had these, this self-doubt. Now you're okay. Now you're good. But how did you get through that? Like, how did you keep taking on these, these, these projects, these films, these shows? Uh, well, what was your, yeah. Honest, honestly, I feel like, like I said, I, I dug my heels in. I was like, how, you know, because I did have that crippling doubt. And I was like, okay, I have to fix this. Like, I have to work harder. I have to go to school. I have to learn this. I have to be more like her. I have to lose weight. I have to clear my skin. I have to stop partying. I have to stay home every night. I mean, I, I, I went into like fix it mode of like, how can I, um, get this, you know, take control basically mm -hmm. back. And I think that there is something legitimate for that. And obviously the only thing you can control is yourself. So, I, got, I buckled down like that, but I think I almost went like too far in that direction sometimes where I was like, I can't, like, I, if I don't do everything right, like nothing's going to work out and I have to stay home and I have to be super disciplined. And I'm like, you know, th there, that can be extreme also. So, because there, at the end of the day, there was nothing wrong with me. There, there, I didn't need, I mean, yes, you can advance and you can educate and you're always growing and always evolving, but I felt like there was fundamentally something wrong with me as I was. So I kept, I kept trying all of these things to, <clears throat> to, um, fix like, myself like, or, or there, was nothing to, there was nothing really to fix. That's, no, I get it. Like, yeah. no, there was yeah. nothing to fix. I was enough as I was. And I was, I was, you know, growing and evolving and, everything I did got me to the next level, but I just felt it, it got to the point where it was never enough. Like it, it was never enough, um, rehearsing or practicing or reading or school. I, I still didn't feel enough because I, even though I was doing all these things and then I just sort of realized, okay, there's nothing wrong with me. I, I don't need to, it's already there. Mm -hmm. And so all this external things is, you know, it's just, um, it, it, I don't need to scramble. Yeah, yeah. Like this, I just, just settle into like that I am enough and I know what I'm doing. This is <laughs> like a, a master class in like, in like positive mental thinking attitude, like all these things that a lot of people struggle with. And I don't know, maybe it's, I, listen, I've never been in, I've never been in Hollywood. I don't know. I'm sure that this role in particular, when you're on screen from a young age, judged in front of, you know, millions of people watching your stuff mm -hmm. that really hits you, your psyche, your mentality, like your mental health, it, it yeah. probably takes a beating. Um, yeah. How did you, how did you get out of that? How did you get out of that? You dug your heels in, you know, you're, you're doing all these things to self improve. What brought you to the point where you realize, like, yes, you are enough. You're good. You're, you're doing amazing things. You don't have to fix everything that doesn't even yeah. need fixing. Um, honestly, I'd, I'd say it was like in the last year or two years, I just sort of, I was doing, I, I got to this place where I was, like I said, like, so I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to, to, direct, to direct and write that, that was, that was what my heart was like telling me to do. But I felt like I couldn't because I didn't have a school. I didn't have this. And I didn't, you know, again, back, back to this shit of like, 
yeah. it's too hard. It's really, you know, you, you know, she's better than me. He's better than me. They know what they're doing and I don't. Um, and so I was just sort of like paralyzed and I was like, okay, I got to do something. So I went to school, went to UCLA and that was great. And I love, you know, just that decision alone, like sort of got, like you said, like the momentum started with that. And when you make these little decisions for yourself, you build trust and confidence in yourself again, because you're like, Oh, look at me. I'm willing to invest in my dream and I'm not just going to sit here and talk about it or complain that it's too hard. Um, so I'm going to take one little step in the direction. And then the next thing you know, one step leads to another step and it's momentum. Um, so I guess it was, you know, when I felt like I was, you know, at this crossroads again of like, um, you know, 15 years later where I was like, I, now I want to do something new. Like I want to do this new thing. And you know what? I'm not, with acting, I, I, you know, I'm so successful, like, that I know that I can do it. And, you know, but this, I might face failure. I might feel face yeah. criticism. This, I'm not an expert at this yet. You know, I'm not a master by any means. I don't have any experience. So I had to, like, challenge my own ego to, in order to step into something as a beginner at this point in, in my life, and my career, and just sort of accept that, you know, I'm going to have to fail. I'm going to have to make mistakes. And, you know, because I don't feel that in, in acting, sort of, I feel like I'm on this train and it's going. But with writing and directing, I was like, oh, damn, I'm starting something as a beginner here, you know, after all of this success and stuff. So yeah. it, I, I had to just swallow that pill and put my ego down and my need for, need for success or validation and just be like, this is a, this is the beginning steps. And while I feel like a veteran over here, I'm a beginner over here. And, but I do know a lot more than I think I do. Mm-hmm. And, and that has served me. So. I, I appreciate that too, that, um, that when you jump into a new field, it's everything you're saying is so on point. And these are all these, these are all lessons that agnostic of, of your specific circumstance, people can take in and hopefully learn from. Um, when you when you started writing, directing, first of all, I'm curious, where are you at with that right now? And how did you, what were the first steps you took? Was, was it UCLA that helped you start to learn about this different craft that you weren't comfortable with? Well, I tried it. I wrote a series last or two years ago with uh, my friend Amber Childers. And, you know, we, we sort of had this like, you know, that thing of like, we can do this. Why not? It's easy. You know, we, we know what we're doing. And, you know, we did to a degree, but there was, you know, some, some structural, you know, foundation elements that would have benefited us as far as saving time. Like we didn't, you don't, that's the thing about starting something new or you don't need to make a million mistakes because someone's already gone before you and done it. And so we kind of learned the hard way on certain things, um, which is fine. Um, and then at a certain point, I was like, okay, I, I want to, this is, this is now becoming more serious of, a, of an ende- endeavor. We had a series set up at Stars, the network. And I was like, I want to go to UCLA for directing just so I can direct the show. And, um, and so I did that for about a year and a half. And that propelled me into all other areas. Um, but, you know, I think I don't, so that show is like not really going anymore. And I don't see it as like a failure because it got me to it. I learned so much, yeah. you know, and I learned the hard way on a lot of things. Like on this next show that I've written, I'm like, I know what to do. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to save myself a bunch of time and money by not doing that. Like I put myself through the hard knocks on that. So, you know, but now I feel so confident, so equipped, so capable because I've already gone through that. And I don't see it as a failure. Like I said, I mean, it is what it is. So, and I, you know, I, I do watch a lot of like business, you know, Tony Robbins and like, yeah, Mark Cuban is my idol. And, you know, I, I, I do relate my mentality to like a business or athlete mentality where it's like you fall down, you get back up. It makes you stronger. You know, I don't take it as like personally, like that. I'm not good. I, I just, I understand. I accept that's part of the process. Yeah. I'm not like going to fight it 
or give up because I couldn't, the first one didn't work out. Keep going. So that's where I'm at with that. And it's, I'm on fire about it because <laughs> I'm so excited. And I know it's like, I know, now I know what to do. And it feels good to, you know, am I still scared to put it out there? Do I still have moments of hesitation and doubt and thoughts of, I can't do it? Of course. But I have proven to myself now that if I just get there, if I get in my car and just go, mm-hmm. and I prepare to whatever degree I need to, like, I can do it. Am I gonna feel like my fucking, you know, body's on fire? Might, maybe, <laughs> you know, with anxiety and like worst case scenarios, like scrambling through my mind, yes. But I know, I trust myself that like once I'm there, I can do it. And it might, I might have to take a Xanax on the way there. You know what I mean? But <laughs> no, I but feel I the passion. I feel the passion. This is, uh, you know? this is something like, you know, you can tell when someone's passionate about something. You can totally tell when something's passionate. And, and even the fact that like, you know, you're, you're cool with just, you're cool with the stress, you're cool with the anxiety, but like you feel the, you feel like those, those micro wins, like those baby steps towards that next thing in your career that's going to be, you know, you're going to be super, you're going to be super proud of that. That's that's yeah. something you took on. This is not this is this is at the point now you're now you're older. You're no longer 14, right? Like everything you're taking on, everybody's looking at you. And that's a hell of a lot of stress, too. That's a lot of stress. How um that's impressive, very impressive. Is that where you want to like where do you want to take are you even sure where you want to take your career or is, or is this just something that you want to do for you? No, I I I think I've, you know, come to the point where you know i want i I feel and i know that i have a valuable voice aside from my work as an actor you know where and 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 i have been in so many people's creative visions as as an actor where you know you step onto the set and everything from the colors to the design to the costumes to the 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 furniture to the, the camera placement it's it's all the mind of the director and i i have that mind like i can create i want to create worlds I have a very unique like vision and and point of view and so and instead of just like sitting on the set being like oh I wish I was doing this Mm -hmm. or well you know this should be that way or whatever I'm like oh I should just do it myself yeah okay so um I I feel like I want to have like a I I have I just started a production company and I just um I I feel that I have a relatable you know millennial female like voice and I, I just want it to be out there and you know share like women's stories of yeah. things like this you know like everything i'm talking about like sort of how to overcome your own like limiting like self-talk and beliefs to to do what it is whatever it is that you want to do and i think all my stories kind of that i've written and i'm directing like reflect the things that are important to me and that i feel is my purpose to share you know and as an actor you know you're not as in control of the message that's being relayed through the film there's that's admirable um i i was i was reading an, an interview you did with uh, i think brieftake.com it was about you attending a woman in film event and i'm curious about your your uh you know insights on why perhaps women are not at the same level as as men in film like they're not holding all those uh senior roles and positions what's like getting in the way of them having more of uh of a foothold in hollywood and film in television in the arts um is that accurate to say or is that inaccurate i'm I'm just curious because you're in this world right now yeah i mean if you look at the data it's it is accurate you know hmm. um but i think that you know there's something about that story and that belief that is continuing to make it so mm-hmm. and because it's just this thing that hasn't been challenged i mean yes the data says that but you know i also know men that are trying to do exactly what i'm doing and are not yeah. <laughs> not going well so i think you know for me i sort of got to this point where i'm like i look at the great men or women filmmakers of, of what they've done and they like got their friends together and, and, and made a movie, you know, and you don't need anyone to tell you, you can or can't do it, or this is bad, or this is good, you know, and I, and I subscribe, I subscribe, subscribe to that before with my other show where I was like, 
this person was telling me no, and this person was telling me no, and this person was giving me notes, and this person, you know, said they were going to help and didn't. This network said they were going to, you know, and yeah. and then I was like, wait, why am I giving my power to so many people? Why am I giving my passion to so many people? Like, why don't I just do it myself? Like, I, you know, and, and then I have to trust that, you know, things will align to have it seen. Maybe that's naive. I don't know. But it's what's not working is this knocking on doors a million times and like, you know, believe, you know, having that needing permission from someone else to do it. Uh, my production company is called Permission Productions and we give it to ourselves and you know, just making stuff and it's on an iPhone or it's, but it's us and it's true to us. And it's like, like the right people are going to see it at the right time. And I just, so, you know, I think that there's creative ways that like women or people or young people or old people or whoever can make their stuff, you know, without getting it made. Like you have to do it yourself at yeah. this point. And luckily for us, like, you know, there's so many resources that we have at our disposal. I mean, I look at John Cassavetes and he started with a video camera and his friends in a house and he became one of the most prolific filmmakers of all time, but he didn't sit there with his idea and say, mm, if only HBO would make this. No, he just made it. And then eventually HBO wanted everything he did. I appreciate that. And I feel that uh, this, the, the fact that you're championing this and, and you, are, you are empowering through the things that you do. So by, by being a writer, by directing, by producing, whatever you want to end up doing, by being that role model, you are, you are empowering. And I think that you mentioned a few things, like why, you know, why are people not just doing? Well, I think it's that apprehension, right? It's that, it's that uh, imposter syndrome. It's that imposter yeah. syndrome that people can't, that can't do it. And, and you need more people like yourself that just do it because they know they can, because they've achieved some level of success, maybe it's given confidence, whatever it may be that allows them to do it, that okay. I think will help, will help sort of pave the way for others. That's the, well, that's, that's I nice. Believe. I, yeah. you know, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I think I look at myself and I'm like, okay, I've had a certain level of success, but you don't even need that. You don't even need that. Like to, in order to get started, like that's what most people wait for is like, well, once I'm successful here, then I can actually do, or once I, you know, do, you know, but you like my, I'm my friend that I'm writing with, like who wrote an incredible script. I mean, with me, um, she, I had to kick her ass like mentally, like the entire mm -hmm. way because she couldn't do it. She was too tired. It was too emotional. You know, she didn't know what she was doing. She was terrible. She, you know, doubted herself every fucking step of the way. <laughs> and I had to literally oh, be like, man. I am not going yeah. to coddle you. I, I believe in you and I would not be here wasting my time and investing my time in this. If, and so get it together because yeah. I am not. And we, she wrote an amazing thing and now she feels like unlimited. And she's like, oh my God, if I could do that and didn't think I could. And I'm like, this was a masterclass in like watching her go from the, the K-hole that she was in about herself to literally like, well, oh my God, if I could do this, then, then, and, and then, then I could do that and making like huge decisions in other areas of her life, but she, it wasn't based on the success that she's already had. She, she, she just got out of school. Like yeah. she's had no success. She has like $15 in her life, <laughs> you know? And, but like, you know, all she needed was that like mindset change and someone to believe in her. And you know, that happened to be me. And so I would not like let her give up on herself because of her own stuff like i and and it was like watching that transformation of within a, a month's time yeah. like it, it was an, incredible so now i'm like wow you really don't need that su success first you just need either someone or yourself to believe in you like that you and not you to uh, let you yeah no, I was going to say, you know what you have to do? Um, you see this a lot in, in, in San Francisco, in, in startup land, Silicon Valley. You have these incubators that, uh -huh. that, that give those people that access, right? You need to do, you need to do something like that for mm -hmm. women in film. I would love to. Like. Yeah. yeah, that would be amazing because 
again, you don't need success. You don't need money. You don't need any of the things that people tell you that you need. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's literally just, yeah, like I would love to do that. That's a really good idea. And like yeah. people have been like, why don't you do a podcast? And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I don't feel like I, but then, you know, I'm like, I know what my passion is and I know what my, um, area of interest is. And yeah. for me, it's not podcast. So maybe it would be something that's like, you know, hands on with people. I think, I think, you know, just, just take what you did there. T take that, take that woman that you helped out and then get that, get, and then you get her to help someone else out. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how an incubator starts. It doesn't have to be so formal. Like, you know, maybe it gets big enough. It, it, it does get formalized, but at the start, like if you have the time, it's all about time, right? But if you have the time, I think that would be a really, really cool initiative to take on because you, cool. you don't have to start a podcast, right? You do whatever yeah. you want. I like doing podcasts. I like interviewing people. Right. But, uh, I, you know, I don't, uh, I, I, I do my own thing for businesses. I help them out. I've worked with entrepreneurs before, but you got to do this for, you got to do this for film. You got to do this type of, of incubator, lab, startup, group, whatever you want to call it for film. And you just, <laughs> and then you have that like, uh, that butterfly effect. And it's just me saying, yes, you can. Well, no. you know what? You know what? <laughs> I'm calling me like, hey, I'm like, do it. I don't care. You're like, and, uh, you, you're, you're those accountability people and people are like trying to lose weight or whatnot. Uh, they're personal trainers. They call them. They tell them what they ate. And that's it. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's, uh, just, it's just me telling yeah. you, yes, you can. <laughs> and I'm not taking your excuses and well, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh -huh. you'd be surprised how helpful that is. And like, I, yeah. you know, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Maybe yeah, next time, that's, next that's year. That's the next one. That's the next one we're doing. All right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was really good. No, I, I appreciate that. I, uh, when, when I first started, you know, when I, when I wanted to do this podcast, I wasn't sure where, which direction it would go in, um, what you wanted to speak about, but I, I really appreciate this. This was really, really good. I'm, Yay, I'm really happy you. with this one. I'm really, really happy with it. Awesome. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, like some life insight questions that I like to ask at, uh, you know, sort of to close it off. But before, was there anything that you wanted to speak about that you're working on now that you're passionate about now? that we didn't really go into? Um, you know, I guess my, just my writing and directing, like I, you know, I, I love my acting and I, I have, you know, worked with incredible, like I worked with David Fincher this year and that was a dream of mine always. And I, and I would love to work with him again. And um, I think, I don't know, you just have to wait and see. I have a lot of All stuff right. coming, coming yeah. out and up <laughs> and, uh, experimenting with you know all kinds of stuff so you'll see all right well you know what that means you have to do another one in a year from now <laughs> when you have the 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 women in film empowerment incubator set up yeah and <laughs> yeah and all the writing the directing all that stuff all right that's Great. cool i appreciate that um mm -hmm. all right let's go through some of these you do more more or less like rapid fire however you want to answer them um what is one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest challenges that you've had in your career, and, and how did you learn from it? Um. Hmm. I mean, I think like twofold this is like uh, the biggest challenge I had was how do I, I? I would look at you know an actor like Natalie Portman or Jessica Chastain and be like, okay, how do they do that? Like, what? What? How? And I didn't know, you know, I knew what I knew, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And I wanted to know. And I think um, I went to I went to acting school, you know, and, and even if I don't use any of that stuff today, which I do. But just just, you know, taking that step, like I said, to learn that and expand myself and challenge myself and always be challenging myself um, gave me you know, invaluable education, but also a sense that I can, I can get better. And I, and there is more to be done. And I, and I wanted to stretch past my own comfort zone in my own acting, I guess is what I could say. Um, <clears throat> and, I, and I think the biggest challenge I've had is just my own holding myself back or comparing, you know, myself to people. And, that's a daily struggle still and of like, Oh, how would she do it? Or, or what is she doing? Or he, what, you know, and I have to constantly remind myself, like, I don't want to be her. I want to be me. And who I am is not 
you know, who they are. And I'm, you know, weird and quirky and talk like a sailor and have a <laughs> sense of humor and don't really give a shit. And that's, that's who I am. I'm not, I can't be Grace Kelly. Like, that's not who I am. So, but that's taken me a long time to come home to also. So, and, you know, staying in my lane and, and not the comparing and the feeling less than, and that has been the biggest challenge for me, which I'm, I know everyone faces, which yeah. breaks my heart. But every time I have that impulse, I remind myself to just lean into who I am even more because I look, the people that I do admire are so unique and original and unapolog unapologetically themselves. And me trying to be like them is not serving me. So I, I and, it, and it's a practice to be like, whenever I have that impulse to compare or, 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 you know, my mind spins about how someone else would do something, I just go, no, like, how, how do I do it? And what do I like? And I have to practice it all the time. Um, and it is getting easier. Very good, good answer. Yeah. Very good yeah. answer. Um, where do you go to, to learn and to stay on top of, of what you want to take on? You know, I went to UCLA um, directing program, which was incredible. Uh, I always want to be in a classroom, actually. I, I just always do. Um, am I always? No. But I... I, 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 there's, there's a class and a book and a community for everything that you want to learn. And, you know, I don't think it's like, sometimes it's not like sitting at home and watching a master class. Sometimes it's like getting in a thing that's uncomfortable for you, mm -hmm. you know, a group of people, uh, um, a new skill that you know, you're going to fail at. Um, I'm always seeking those kinds of things out. Um, so even if I don't pursue it or do it, I learn something and I stretch my comfort zone. So I think I'm going to do a comedy class this month because <laughs> I've always been told I can't do comedy. And then I, then I believed that. So I didn't. Um, but now I'm like, wait, I want to. And I think I'm funny. And that would be fun for me. Who cares? So I'm, I'm going to be in a comedy class of Zoom people and. We'll see how that goes. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. And you know what? That's, a, that's another, just like if somebody says you can't do it, just prove them wrong. And it doesn't matter if you don't want to do it long term, just prove them wrong. Yeah, just, just exactly. Put yourself out there, you know? Yeah. And if it turns out not to be my strength or my, who cares? At least I like, You'll I'll know. get something from it. Yeah. You'll know. And it won't be someone else like imposing that. Yeah. Uh, something yeah. that I bought that they said. Like, yeah. Yeah challenging that yeah what advice would you give someone who wants to go into acting oh man <laughs> <laughs> oh my brain goes to don't um but that's yeah. not true <laughs> no that's not true um i guess you know it's such a cliche like thing of like just work hard and don't give up it's like yeah but like make sure you're always taking care of yourself mm -hmm. you know and and that your self-worth and is not dependent upon you know making it as an actor um always have money always have you know another job or something that you know facilitates that and and hi and um yeah just just always be just making stuff again, like you don't have to be hired by a, um, by someone to, to make something. You don't have to wait until you have an agent and the whole rigmarole, you know, find opportunities to, um, to act yeah. because of the momentum, you know, the momentum that you're like, Oh, well, I'm acting in, Oh God, if I hear one more person, like, it's not a big, it's nothing really. It's not a big deal. Shut up. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is a big deal. Like you're acting on, in a student film where you wrote something and you're filming it and, oh yeah, well, it's not good. Like stop talking down about yourself and about every, every opportunity that you get. That's not a Marvel movie. Like you, you have to believe in those little steps and be super excited about those because, you know, that's the momentum that's going to get you 
wherever mm -hmm. one day. So, you know, to, to take these little steps and, and see all of your wins and to be brave enough to like, even if you feel overweight or you feel like you're not pretty enough or you, I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. That's what's beautiful about this industry right now and, and the world and media is that like, nobody wants to look the same anymore. It, it, it's not cool to, 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 to try to be like skinny and perfect and it's just not. People want real. And so anyone can be a star. Anyone and everyone has the same, you know, like look at, you know, the girls on Broad City or they, they, they don't, they're not like fitting into this cookie cutter bullshit. And mm -hmm. so you don't have to be that. And if that's the image that you have of, that you need to be in order to act, like you're shooting yourself in the foot. So that would be, it's just like start acting and have a vision of where you want to go, but stop, don't, you know, beat yourself up for every little thing that you get. That's not that, like see that as the path to get there and yeah, stay, stay humble and learning and growing. What would be uh, a lesson that you would tell your younger self? Oh, <sighs> Baby girl, <laughs> um, a lesson. You don't need everyone to like you at all. Like stop wasting so much energy, mental, physical, emotional energy in trying to have everyone like you because it's, you lose yourself when you do that. And I think I was on a lot of sets and a lot of meetings and a lot of trying to be someone I wasn't for the imaginary version of myself I thought that they wanted um and I think I you know my confidence suffered because I was trying to be you know something besides me because I thought I needed everyone to like me um but you don't as long as you like you and you know that at the end of the day. So that's one. <laughs> <laughs> There's, that's a good lesson. You can keep, you can keep going if you want, but that was a good one. You don't have to have more than that. That's a tough one sometimes, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and this is the, this is the, uh, the last one before, um, I just get all your socials, which I can probably just pull up on my, t on my uh, computer right now. But, uh, what does success mean to you? It's a big one. I mean, it's meant a lot of different things to me over the years. It's meant money. It's meant, um, you know, achieving certain goals. But once you achieve those goals and you have that money, you know, you sort of wonder what now. And so I think success for me is like facing my fears and um, you know, facing my, um, yeah, my fears of failing and doing it anyway, and the fulfillment and pride that I feel in myself after I, after I do that. Um, yeah, that, that's all you can hope for, I think. And the success, the money, the, all of that comes after you face those fears because you you're doing it at that point so I feel successful because I am super happy and proud of the work I'm doing and do and you know if I held what I'm doing now up to the lens of success that I had five years ago I would be failing so mm -hmm. it's you know I think also to be happy with just like so little just minimalism in life, I, I think that's success because then you can't, you can't lose. Like I'm super, I, you know, I live in a really cute apartment. Like I just love the things that I have and don't have more than I want or need. And that to me is success because I have overcome that, that belief that I need a bunch of stuff in order to be successful. Um, and so now I just feel free, more free. And, um, my mind is more free and my physical space is more free and I don't need anything in order to feel, um, happy. So 
freedom is success to me. Very good answer. Very mm -hmm. good answer. All right. That's all I got. Um, cool. Yeah. So on social, you're, you're, you're easy. You're, you're Levin Rambin at, at everywhere. So Twitter, yeah. Instagram. Um, I don't know if you have a Facebook page. You, I'm probably I do. sure you do. Okay. <laughs> good, good. It's also so. Levin Rambin, believe it or not. All right. Yeah. So easy there. Um, and where do people go to find uh, new stuff that you're working on? Is there another site or is that it? I, my Instagram, I keep it pretty up to date. Um, cool. The Big Ugly is now available on iTunes and Amazon. Um, yeah, that's, that's where all. you can find the update. That's all for today. Thanks again for joining me on another episode of the Success Story Podcast. You can download or stream this podcast wherever podcasts are available, including iTunes, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many others. You can also watch this podcast on YouTube. If you haven't already, please subscribe and share this podcast with your friends, family, coworkers, and peers. Please leave us a rating on iTunes. It takes about 30 seconds as it allows other people to find our podcast and lets our amazing guests reach even more people with their message. And remember, any rating is fine as long as it contains five stars. I'm Scott Clary from the Success Story Podcast, signing off.